My name is Shira Komu and I'm the founder of Zazi. Zazi is a women empowerment platform and we are based in Nairobi, Kenya. My name is Brenda Ogera of Ogera Law. Ogera Law is a legal firm based in Karen in Nairobi, Kenya. My name is Desi Obanda of Jurabox. Jurabox is an African social enterprise, specifically around the law. We exist to unbox the law to make the important things simple. Welcome to episode four of Ladies and the Law. We are here again with uh, the usual suspect. <laughs> the usual suspect. Brenda Ogera of Ogera Law. <laughs> and Shiro Kamu of Zazi. <laughs> All right, back here to give you the information you need about you and the law. And I'm just thinking, what a time to be alive, people, for the first time ever in the history of this country. Mm -hmm. A female, a woman, has been nominated to be the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya. The President of the Supreme Court. Yes. Somebody say something. <laughs> Let, Let me hear. Let yes. us say her name. <laughs> Let us say her name, Martha Kome. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. um, this is exciting. It is. Um, just getting into what we are discussing today. Incidentally, there's things that she has said in her decisions in court or her dissenting decisions in court about what we're about to talk about today, which mm -hmm. is property. So get your purses, get your title deeds, get your, mm, you know, that's what we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> yeah, so what is yours is mine. What is mine is mine and yours is ours. What's your, what's your personal <laughs> philosophy? That one. <laughs> Which is mine is mine. <laughs> and what's yours is <laughs> ours. Is ours. <laughs> okay, so there's been, you know, a lot of conversation around women and property and women's access to property in Kenya, the kind of laws that we have that are progressive-ish, mm -hmm. you know, but they still have lots of gaps. Shiro, where you're sitting, what are those things that as a woman you're like, okay, these are the things that I need to know. I need to know how this works. Yeah, so first of all, as a Wanjiro, <laughs> very excited about this conversation. This topic. <laughs> anyway, we are talking about title deeds. Yeah. Say less. Yes. <laughs> Say less. I am there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but as women, obviously, uh, as we go through the stages of life, um, it's easy when you're single, because I mean, nowadays we, we are securing the bag, you know, we, we are winning in this life. and. As a single person, it's easy to go and get yourself, you know, something, acquire um, some piece of land, some house, an apartment somewhere. It's easy like that. But in certain situations, as you progress in life, say like in marriage, right, or in a family setting where, say, there's loss of a parent or parents, for example, and I think that's where to start, in a family setting where uh, unfortunately, a parent has died or parents have died and there's the issue of inheritance. And as women, um, in this uh, country or African um, culture, mm -hmm. women should not inherit. And I think it comes from, oh, so you'll get married and, <laughs> you know, your husband's... Where you're going. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's something, there's something that's for you. yours. You yeah. know? So leave this one's, this one's here for us who have to marry, right? Um, so I want to know, Brenda, is legally, um, I'm sure we've moved in some, some way, right? Mm -hmm. we've, we've progressed. Are women allowed to inherit? Do we have rights over, over our parents' property? Yes, yes, we yeah. actually do. Um, all children are considered equal mm -hmm. nowadays. So by the law, every child um, you know, has a right to own the parents' property um, equally. Yeah, girls, boys. Is that regardless of the gender? So, mm. but is that subject to your traditions or to your cultural law? Yeah. Um, previously, it was because that's what really governed inheritance. Okay. But there have been, you know, progressive laws in recent times that have come up and said, you know, all children are, e are equal. Because previously, you would find that some cultures would say, what exactly you're saying? Mm. Yeah. The boys are staying, the girls are going. So the girls let them acquire from their or rather through their husbands, husbands yes. while the boys acquired through their parents. Mm. But that has since been, you know, um, removed and rubbished. So nowadays, every child is equal in a home. 
when it comes to inheritance, you all inherit equally, regardless of your gender. Yeah. Yeah, I like that you use the word rubbished. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where it belongs. <laughs> that's where it is, <laughs> though. No. But that's where it is, yeah. This braid of mine oh, yeah, is okay. coming into my face. <laughs> I have to, to cut off that part <laughs> <cold. laughs> You're like, you're like <laughs> moving on swiftly. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And in the case of loss of a spouse, for example, mm -hmm. yeah, um, we've seen so many cases where women, um, all of a sudden you've lost your spouse, worst time mm -hmm. possibly for you. Mm -hmm. um, but the family of the husband, the late husband comes in and they want to own in Malietu, yes, you know, yes. and those cases are quite, quite many. And obviously, because mm -hmm. of the limitations of access of, of law for mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. uh, many women are left without anything. So I don't know how women can prevent. And I mean, and I know you're you're planning towards a very, you know, um, unfortunate Sometimes, result, yeah. yeah okay. But um, in what way can women, you know, just uh, protect themselves from situations like those? Um, it is it is prudent to have wills, and that is something that I highly advise people to do, um, whether you're single or not, whether you're in a married relationship or not. Um, just ensure that you have your property first of all listed, and you have bequeathed your dependents, because that's the issue. But that's beside the point. So what I would highly advise women to do is ensure that your name is on the property that you co-own with your husband, because matrimonial property is for the both of you, for the benefit of the family. So it's important to have these properties enlisted in both your names so that in the unfortunate uh, circumstances, you know, in the, in the unfortunate event that your husband passes on, you still have a right to this property. Because it's easier to prove that in court um, as opposed to not having anything in your name. Would you qualify that though? Like mm -hmm. what? what is matrimonial yeah. property because people keep hearing oh matrimonial property mm -hmm. what what is that basically matrimonial property would refer to your matrimonial home yeah um, this is the place where you have designated as your house as your home for you and your family then uh, it also refers to the effects the household goods and the household effects that are in that home so that will that qualifies to be matrimonial home if you have a family business as well, that would definitely qualify to be matrimonial property as well, because it is purely for the benefit of okay. your family. Of family. Yes. Independently. Is that me? That's me. Cut. This is the other phone that's vibrating. Um, now that we are in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, so I am looking to get married. Mm -hmm. um, this chick who has jipangad, you know. Um, you I'm have a, your I'm a modern woman, independent woman, you know. You have a couple. So I've been working, <laughs> and I have a couple in Roy somewhere, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and whatever else I I, I own. Mm -hmm. So now I'm getting into the marriage. Is this property that I had acquired, and even in the case of the guy the um, that we had acquired pre-marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, considered matrimonial property when we come together? No, no it will not. Any property acquired before uh, the subsistence of the marriage is considered personal property. Okay. So your car that you had before that marriage, that's mm -hmm. yours. Mm -hmm. The plot that you had before that marriage, that's yours. But there's a twist. So if you owned property prior to the marriage, but later on, during the subsistence of the marriage, you both decide that you know this property that you bought in Rai can actually we can actually construct a home there and make that our matrimonial home. So both parties start contributing towards the construction of this home, right? Mm -hmm. And you eventually do that and get into that home. Um, you, you live inside it. You have your children there. You raise them up in that home. Then now this man can actually claim a right to that home because it is now your matrimonial property. Yes. Have I made okay. sense there? Because they've developed the together. together. They've developed so the there's a contribution towards it. That's the key element in matrimony, in what you can determine as matrimonial property. There has to be a contribution between the two parties. And this contribution has to be for the benefit of the family. So those are the two things you have to um, establish. If those are present, 
then that can be declared as matrimonial okay. property. Yes. So speaking of contributions, mm -hmm. um, let's say I'm a stay-at-home mom. We decided as a family that um, uh, we want to have maybe a parent at home or for whatever reason really, right. um, and the lady is a stay-at-home mom. So every time we think of contribution, we think monetary contribution. Well, little uh, 300,000, you are 300. So um, in the case where you are not financially able to contribute monetarily, uh, what what happens in that, in that case? Do you have any right towards any of this matrimonial property? Let's say even it's things that were acquired within the marriage. All right. Yes, you do have a right. Basically, what the law states is that contribution does not necessarily have to be monetary uh, monetary contribution. So that's key. And I think our women need to know that and understand that. Because any contribution you make, whether it is through your actions, mm -hmm. For instance, now the example that you've just laid out for us, where a woman stays back home, takes care of these children, ensures that the man has a nice home to come back to, mm -hmm. supports this man emotionally, is always there for this man, mm -hmm. that alone is contribution enough for you to actually lay claim mm -hmm. to that mat matrimonial property. So it doesn't have to be monetary. Okay. Brenda, does it work the other way now? That <laughs> now nowadays, yes, yes, yes. Um, you it could be that the woman is you know the woman is 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 she's at work. She's the one who's who has businesses, who's mm -hmm. financially mm -hmm. able, and the man is you know I can keep the home. I'm great with the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, you know I can farm. You know make sure we have fresh food. Yeah, yeah I'm, a, mm -hmm. I'm a chef. Does it, does it work the other way as well? Yes, it does. The rights basically should be equal, equal to yeah. both spouses. Where the man now takes care of the home, contributes towards you know, um, taking care of the children, ensuring that there's food ready for this woman, while the woman secures the bag, um, same rules apply. Mm. So what we need to realize is that spouses have the same equal rights to, that, that apply to them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so maybe the other thing I want to ask is, um, in the situation we have acquired, however we contributions mm -hmm. were monetary on and monetary, mm -hmm. um, whatever the situation is, we have acquired something, some property um, within the marriage. Mm -hmm. Is it in everyone's best interest for both names to appear on the deeds or whatever it is? Um, yeah. Is, yeah. It, is, yeah. is that yeah. the best case scenario? That, totally, totally, yeah. totally. It's highly advisable that as a couple, when you acquire property, have both names in your title uh, deeds yeah, or registration certificates, whatever it is, depending on what the property is. Yes. So it's highly advisable that both parties ensure that you know their names are on those title documents. But now, because mm -hmm. we live in this society of ours where man is head of the house, right? Yeah, yeah. Which, for whatever reason, also means man's name appears on the mm -hmm. deed or whatever certificate um, that is. Um, how can, you know, women, um, in case of any eventuality, right? Uh, because, I mean, the law is there to protect us, right? Yeah, yeah. So in case of any eventuality, and your name is not on that title deed, mm -hmm. um, how can women protect themselves from an eventuality where you're left with nothing? nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's unfortunate that people get into marriages, you know, not with the idea that one day it's going to end, and so we have to put my name here, we yes, have to put my yes. but it does. So just to protect yourself, it is highly important that you have your name on that title document. Should you not be uh, you know, able to do that because of your man is either those men now that you're saying, mm -hmm. then now it's just important as a woman to ensure that you, you can be you know, able to prove one day, should it happen, that you actually contributed to the acquisition of this property. So okay. it is very key that you, you, know, you can detail 
um, your, your the kind of contribution you did. So if you contributed 10 shillings on this particular day, you can do it through your bank. So one day you have a whole statement of accounts that shows this money was wired to Mr. Mann on this particular day towards the construction of our home. Mm. So yeah. basically keep records. It's okay. important to keep records. Keep, it is, it keep is the high, receipts. Keep yes. receipts. <laughs> keep receipts. Keep a keep personal receipts. statement. Yes. Yes, <laughs> and let him know that it's not that you don't trust him. It's just that it's just um, that yes, it it you're might prioritizing happen. yourself exactly, mm. exactly. Oh. Basically, there's a history to this. Previously and initially, it was that just the same way you say the man is the head of the home, so he holds the title in, in trust, trust huh? exactly mm. yes. for the family. That is what it 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 really was. Actually, some of the arguments I've seen mm -hmm. is, but what is mine is ours. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly why, if it's just my name on the title, it's okay. Because what is mine is ours. Is ours. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> that really <laughs> gives me some anxiety on this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does. Is that why we are now signing prenups? Highly key. <laughs> highly key. We, we need to, by the way. We do. But, uh, yeah, I'm old-fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so I, I, I need so to ask from a legal here whether uh, people <laughs> sign prenups. <laughs> From a legal standpoint, I would advise it. From a personal uh, standpoint, <laughs> yeah, we cool. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure? I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm, sure. <laughs> I'm happy for we you. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I don't. I know they are not very common. Mm -hmm. uh, when no, we hear not. we They're hear prenups, we think Kenya. of you know the celebrities in the Western Beyonce. world. Um, but yes. in in um, your day to day work. Have you had um, requests for, for such? At all. No, at not all. at all. None at all. It's always it's always the after, so it's always separation, divorce. That's what we're always talking about with clients, for or at least the matters that have come before me. Yeah, with my clients, we are, I've never got a client who's asked that. Yes, can we do this? Let's do a prenup. Yeah, yeah and ideally, because the property before doesn't uh, fall under matrimonial property. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what does the prenup now consist of, really? The prenup what is basically to... It, it can be two prong. It always consists of the property that both parties have acquired before. So you just lay it bare. Okay. I have this, 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 this going into this marriage, right? It's now, not yours. It's not yours. <laughs> so that's part one. Part two, whatever we acquire, this is how we are going to divide it. You get, mm -hmm. yes. That's basically what should go into the prenup. So it's about property owned before, property owned during, and division of property after. And as well as the dogs, the cats, the children, the children custody, too, yeah? etc. People, yeah, some spouses actually want to put that down. If I, if we have children, of course, I'll go with them if they are up to this age or whatever. You okay. know, you put in your uh, demands and your ultimatums there. Right and you've there, agreed there. ahead of time. And you've time. agreed ahead of time and you sign it off. But of course, it, you shouldn't coerce the other party because again, if you do that, then it might be yeah, it termed as, avoid, eh? yes. Okay. So I hear there are also post naps. Mm -hmm. So we've already gotten into this relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And for whatever reason, you're looking at this situation and you're like, hey, yeah, there'll be problems. Maybe you're in there and you're like, hey, this one looks like I may need to exit <laughs> heading, in the it's next. It's heading there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. this person is coming in a certain way yeah. I'm not very comfortable with. <laughs> so in the marriage, you can do um, post now. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. You can. You mm -hmm. can. Okay. Basically, um, you know the way people always joke around that marriage is a contract? Yeah. It kind of is. It really is. It eh? really is. It really is. So it's just about what you and your husband will agree on mm -hmm. and moving forward you execute that mm -hmm. yeah uh, that's not where i sit you said it well i may have sound oh yeah sound yeah, yeah. <sighs> 30, 30 what? 35 30. let's talk about businesses mm -hmm. so we are business owners mm -hmm. or one of us is a business owner mm -hmm. um let's say i had i was running a biashara pre-marriage um, I would assume that remains as that, yeah? Uh, let's say we start a, or, or rather, let's say we start a business as a family uh, in the marriage that um, is, fam is uh, to the benefit of the family, yes? yes. Uh, but what about 
Aishiro married, I start, I start a business within the marriage. Mm -hmm. what, what happens in that situation? Is this considered ours or is it yours? Um, what, what is the um, case in that? That would depend. Mm -hmm. It depends if the man is, uh, joins you into that business and you know, um, takes a role. Okay. Yeah, in whatever position uh, in that company. Mm -hmm. So if that is just for you, he may claim as a co-director, not even in terms of matrimonial property. It's not even matrimonial. It's not even now. matrimonial okay. property. That's partnership, really. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's about it's like any the other company business. Laws, exactly. Okay. The company laws would actually guide you on that. But should he join you in terms of um, progressing this business for the benefit of the family, mm -hmm. you know? directly benefiting the, com uh, the family, then now that becomes matrimonial property and he may actually um, have a late stake to that in that regard. But my question though is um, this phrase, benefit of the family, mm -hmm. It's so vague. I mean, as long as you're in a marriage, uh, actually anything for me, as long as really, you're working, yeah, you're doing this that, for the family. Yeah, so, yeah, true. I mean, at, how do you argue that, oh, okay, this was not for the benefit of a family. Mm. This Biashara over here I've been running by I, I myself think, is for my benef for I think, my benefit. I think the judges actually saw that, and that's why we have so many decisions and eventually our laws coming up and actually stating what matrimonial property is. Mm -hmm. And that's why they stuck at three, on three things. That's the matrimonial home, that's the family business, and that's the household goods. Uh, End of story. Okay. So you cannot say that your salary that you earn every month, since it's of course it's for the benefit of the family, but I can't come as your husband and say, yes, give me half of that or your yeah. savings or whatever it is. You understand? Okay. Yeah. So I, I hope I've yeah, it's that, clear that, now. Yeah. 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 So yeah. everything else is up for discussion. Everything uh, else away is up from for, these three yes, things. Everything else is up for discussion and you have now to prove mm. that yes, this business that she had or this thing that she was doing or this property this is a property that she had was for us. So okay. unless you can prove that it does not um, amount to matrimonial property. Okay, so yeah. my chama savings and investments are, are mine and mine alone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Brenda, I just have a general lo uh, question mm -hmm. around the law relating to women and property in mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, it's changed over time. Mm -hmm. It's continuing to change. But it's said that there are a few gaps and there's the way that um, judges interpret it, like for instance, in terms of split of of, the of property, property yeah. there's it's it's not even, it's not uniform the way that's done. Could you comment on that? Um, on the gaps in the law generally? Yes, um, there was a massive gap initially. Let's take it back, and that's why new laws came to being that matrimonial property should be split 50-50, right? because people realized that women would always fall short when divorce came by, right? So while that happened, the courts also realized that now these very women would be trying to get into relationships or into these marriages, knowing that at the end of five years, I'm out. And at the end of it all, 50-50, 50% right? is mine. Yes. So judges have also become radical over time. So these guys actually sat down and thought, no, we cannot keep doing this because there's cries from the men mm. and there's cries from the women. At the end of it all, it's justice that these people seek. So it is for that reason that it came to be that your contribution to the relationship is what matters. So you cannot be, as Brenda, I'm sitting, I'm, I'm, I'm in a married relationship right now, thinking that, yes, should we, in the unfortunate event that we, are, we divorce, Oh, 50% is mine outright. No, it is not. You have to prove that this is what I contributed and actually this is what I'm claiming for. Just the same way my husband may have to prove that this is what I contributed and this is what I'm claiming for. Okay. So yeah, there's been gaps, but over time the judges and the courts and the, uh, and the you know, legislations have also tried to evolve with time so that this is covered. That they clarify. Yes. But what about the question that Wanjiro asked Which earlier one? about you giving contri a contribution that's mm -hmm. not Monetary. non monetary yeah, that's non monetary mm -hmm. how are the courts going about deciding yes. what that amounts to yeah yes. attaching value yeah. to that 
So basically, I, I mentioned I mentioned that you know if it's non-monetary contribution, you just have to ensure that you have records. So I mentioned record keeping. You have to know that on this day, this is what I did during this whole time. I've been doing A, B, C, D, making care. Of, I mean, taking care of the home, uh, taking care of the children, ensuring that this man is happy and you know um, at peace in mind, so that he can be able to go out there and seek for us. Right. So all those you have to document them. So that when it comes to it, before court, you can provide evidence that this is what I've been doing. So you have dates, you have timelines, you have details, really, of what has been happening in terms of your contribution to this family. Yes. So that is very key. Wow. So yeah. we stay journaling. So you say at the end of the day, yes. ladies, keep yeah. your keep your journals. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the chef. Yes. I was the driver. <laughs> And to, and to by the way, on top of that, I think I didn't even finish answering your question. The laundry. <laughs> to, and to, to, to finish answering your question, um, the courts have discretion, discretionary powers. So as Shiro, you'll come, <clears throat> I used to do A, B, C, D. Then the court will actually, it's up to the judge to actually look at that part, that particular contribution that you are, you know, you've, you've proved before court that you used to do. Now that's when the court will be like, okay, you are equal to 25% of the matrimonial property, or 30 or 50, however the case may be. So really, at the end of it all, it's to the discretion of the court, yes, okay. to now really answer your question. Wonderful. But you have to prove Wonderful. your contribution. So all those online cookery courses you've been taking, not them, because that's mm -hmm. what makes you a chef, you yes. know, and gives you <laughs> higher. Yes. Higher, higher value. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. So, I mean, there we have it. So, in conclusion, what are we challenging women to do or not do in relation to them and their property? Where I sit, I'd say, formalize your unions, mm -hmm. <laughs> formalize your separations, journal, <laughs> journal, <laughs> journal. Yeah. Make your own money. <laughs> yeah, secure your bag. <laughs> secure yeah, the bag. Secure secure the the bag. bag. And make sure your name is on that. And make sure your in. Yes, yeah. make sure your name is on the documents. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd say. Any additions? Mm -hmm. I think you've said it all for yes. me, really. Yeah. <laughs> and that's um, formalizing your marriage, very key. Very mm. key. And that's <laughs> on period. That's period. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, <laughs> I hope that this has been insightful. I mean, the whole point behind this this yeah. board is to get you to know what's out there, to know what you need to know um, and what the law says. So I hope you've learned something. So stay tuned for the next one where we end the unions. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs>